What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Bulls Report. Juicy show we got in store for you guys today. My name is Patrick Seatman, but we are going to be diving into the latest around Zach Levine because I think we actually have an asking price, uh, according to uh, Casey Johnson. He was the one that reported this at first. He said the Bulls would be focused on getting a good young player, multiple first-round picks, and a salary filler if they decide to trade Zach Levine, obviously coming from NBC Sports Chicago's very own KC Johnson. And all I have to say before we get into this, here we go. I do expect Zach Levine to be dealt before Thursday. I think a trade could be honestly be coming any hour now. I think if the Bulls, if they get the trade package they like, I fully expect them to kind of just finally commit to this rebuild that a lot of the fans and I think a lot of the people in that front office are kind of hoping the Bulls do. And Zach Levine is probably one of the best trade pieces out there on the market. And I think I could see a team getting desperate Thursday night and calling the Chicago Bulls and potentially giving them what they want. So just in a second here, we'll be going over three potential Zach Levine trade packages all around the 2023 NBA draft. But before we do that, guys, help me prove my boss is wrong. Before I was actually hopping in the studio right here, uh, my boss kind of chirped me in the ear and said, no way you can't get the most likes ever on today's video. Well, that's 200. So let's prove them wrong. Go down there, free easy way to help us out and hit that like button. But now let's talk about three draft day trades around Zach Levine. Because obviously now we have the asking price of what the Bulls could be looking for in a, a Zach Levine uh, blockbuster NBA trade. The first trade, and I've said this on the channel, I've shown this on the channel multiple times, my favorite trade of them all. The third overall pick ends up going to the Chicago Bulls along with Anthony Simon. Simon's a certified bucket getter. And then the Trailblazers would be getting Zach Levine, Alex Caruso, and Andre Drummond. Now, before we get into uh, kind of my thoughts on the Bulls side of things, I actually think the Trailblazers side of this, I think this is one of the better offers they can get. I think Zach Levine, solid second option. You know, will this get them over the hump? Probably not. I mean, the West is stacked with like the Suns and the Nuggets, but I think you could kind of convince Dame and kind of say, hey, we're going to get you a secondary score in Zach Levine, better than CJ McCollum, who they've already tried that experiment with, but I go in my grave saying Levine's a better player than C.J. McCollum. Then you also get a great connective piece on offense in Caruso, and obviously we know how, his, uh, or how he is on the defensive side of the floor, was still first team all defense last year. Then a solid uh, bench big in Andre Drummond, who actually had a great second half of the season for the Chicago Bulls. For just on the Trailblazers side of, the, side of things, I actually don't think this is that outlandish for them. But from the Bulls side, this is my dream trade. Like If they could actually go get the third overall pick, whether it's Scoot or Brandon Miller, and we can get them at three, I would be absolutely all in on that trade. But as you guys know, I'm a big fan of Scoot Henderson. I think he's going to be an absolute dog in the NBA. And maybe it's just because I like athletic point guards. You know, growing up watching D. Rose, and I see a little bit of D. Rose in Scoot Henderson. Obviously, Scoot, probably more built like a Russell Westbrook type of uh athletic guard but he plays a lot like D Rose he has that quick burst that D Rose has and he actually kind of palms the ball when he's dribbling very similar to what D Rose did in his uh, early half of his career but his numbers for the G League Ignite this season 16 and a half points a game just over five rebounds just under seven assists efficiency that's obviously the biggest question mark with him he did shoot 27.5 percent from deep this past season but he only took three three pointers a game and I do think his shot I think we can see the development just because it's not, he doesn't really have a herky jerky motion. He doesn't really have a hitch. It's one smooth, fluid motion. It's just going to come down for him putting in the reps and putting in that work. And I think Scoot has that dog to do so. But my take with the Bulls potentially getting the third overall pick, and if your guy is Scoot Henderson and you saying like the Bulls front office is like our guy that we want to go get is Scoot, I actually think you might have to trade up to two to go get him because. Originally, when the draft lottery happened, I think all of us thought, you know, with the Charlotte Hornets getting that second overall pick, we all kind of assumed that they were going to take Brandon Miller because the initial thought was, oh, no way they want to have Scoot Henderson and LaMelo Ball in the same backcourt together. But honestly, I can see them going Scoot. I think Scoot's a generational talent. I think Scoot would be the number one overall pick in the next two draft class and honestly probably in the previous two as well. I think Scoot is that good and I think the Hornets think th so as well. And I saw this interesting uh, kind of argument was like, you know, the Hornets could take Scoot Henderson and then potentially move off LaMelo Ball and get something for him. So honestly, I think Scoot, I think he's actually more likely to go number two than a lot of people think. And if the Bulls, if that is your guy and that is who you want to go get, I think you might got to be start, or you think you might have to start calling Charlotte 
for that number two overall pick. But guys, let's speak it into existence. Spam the chat with Scoot. I want to go down there. I don't want to see a thousand Scoots in the comment section. You guys know this is my dream kind of offseason move for the Chicago Bulls to be somehow bringing that athletic point guard to the Chicago Bulls. But anyways, just type Scoot in the comment section. And then also for the NBA draft, no matter where Scoot goes, we'll have you guys covered here at Chat Sports. We're going to be live on our main channel for every single pick during the NBA draft. As you guys know, ESPN, they cut away from uh, or during the second round when Nikola Jokic was picked. We won't be doing that. We'll have every single pick covered, deep diving into analysis on each and every single prospect. So if you see this thumbnail on your YouTube page, click on it and come hang out with us during the draft. But trade idea number two, and this was the Bulls trading with the Orlando Magic, who could be potentially wanting to get aggressive and kind of consolidating some of the assets they have and going out and getting a guy like Zach Levine. So the trade idea that I had uh, seen thrown out there was a six overall pick, Jalen Suggs, Gary Harris, and Jonathan Isaac. Kind of focusing in on the six overall pick that the Bulls would be getting. Because obviously you won't be getting, you know, Scoot Miller, obviously one Benyama, and you probably won't be getting uh, the Thompson twin. And then you're probably sitting there like, all right, who's left? To me, it's Cam Whitmore, and it's funny enough, when we were kind of starting the starting my process of looking into a bunch of these guys, I was not a big fan of Cam Whitmore. I just, you know, I watched a lot of Villanova basketball last year, and he didn't really pop like I expected uh, him to this past season, because obviously he was a highly touted five-star star recruit coming out of high school, and a lot of Villanova fans expected a lot from him this past season. And it was okay this past year at Villanova. But for Cam Whitmore, for me, it's the eye test with him. Like, yes, the numbers, you know, 12 and a half points a game, 5.3 rebounds per game, 1.4 steals per game, pretty solid efficiency. But the thing is with Cam Whitmore, man, it's the way he gets to the rim. And I, kind of my breakdown and analysis of Whitmore is he's a big physical guard. He weighs 230 pounds, sitting around six foot five. Like, he's got these massive shoulders. He's a downhill, just typical slashing guard. And I do think uh, we've seen it in the past couple years in the NBA playoffs, like, and honestly throughout NBA history, is like bigger and just more explosive guards, I feel like their game translates more to the postseason. I think the postseason, obviously we know it gets more physical. It's a lot more you know, defensive focused, and it's a lot of a slower game. And I think physicality plays a much bigger impact. And I think Cam Whitmore... I think he's that. Like, I think he can handle a postseason run. I mean, we've seen it. Like, even with Steph Curry, I think he's the greatest point guard of all time, he has struggled in moments in the postseason due to the physicality. And that's just kind of naturally how it is. Like, we've seen even, like, I mean, Derrick Rose. I mean, I love D. Rose, but, like, he was more of a frail guy, like, in terms of just overall body mass. We've seen, like, when Bulls ran into the heat in those uh, conference finals, like, you put a bigger defender on him who's more physical, he can kind of throw him off his game. I don't think that's the case with Cam Whitmore. I've kind of ch- turned my tune on him, and plus, he's got the Nova blood in him. Like, if you talk about the recent draft prospects that came out of Nova, you know, Jalen Brunson, Cal Bridges, and Dante DiVincenzo, like, there's been a lot of hits out of Villanova. They just play good basketball over there, so if the Bulls would somehow get that six overall pick, consider taking Cam Whit- Whitmore. But, Trade idea number three, and I, I'm kind of a fan of this one. But the 18th overall pick, this would be a trade with the Miami Heat. The Bulls would be getting the 18th pick. Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry is kind of a salary filler, and then maybe a future first-round pick for Zach Levine. You obviously know the Miami Heat went on that great postseason run, and they are definitely a team that's been connected to, you know, Beal before he got traded to the Suns. Obviously, they've been highly connected to Dame. Maybe they could be trying to go get Zach Levine. And it's focusing on Tyler Hero here. You know, he's a bucket getter. I mean, Tyler Hero obviously has his defensive issues on that side of the floor, but you can't deny how good of an uh, you know, offensive player Tyler Hero is. I mean, averaging 20 points a game, 4.2 assists per game, 5.4 rebounds a game, and then obviously shooting the ball very, very well. And I will say this as Rolly's laughing at me. Uh, so, quick little side story here. Tyler Hero can't guard me. Uh I played him back in my sophomore year of high school, and I did give him a slight 15 points. Not trying to – a little a little humble brag, but uh, I will say Tyler Hero gave me a solid 45 on my head. It was uh, probably one of the coolest moments in my basketball career because I was uh, riding a high, scored like the first nine points of the game, and then Tyler Hero came back down 40 on my head. But Tyler Hero, he's obviously a phenomenal offensive talent, but uh, it's obviously the defensive issues with him that has kind of held him back from uh, kind of taking that next step in his NBA career. But the 18th overall pick, Jordan Hawkins is my guy. I mean, 
Jordan Hawkins, I've seen him float around a lot uh, on just mock drafts. I've mean, seen him high as like 12, and then I've seen him honestly fall to like 25. So if the Bulls could somehow get that 18th overall pick and Jordan Hawkins is there, I'm all in on it. I mean, the Bulls need shooting no matter what direction they kind of go this offseason. If they go full rebuild, if they go kind of maybe a retool, or if they try to run it back, like the Bulls need to add shooting. And the best shooter in this draft, no doubt to me, is Jordan Hawkins. He's got the most smooth shooting stroke that I've seen out of any prospect. He gets that high release point, and it's every single time his jump shot is just consistent. He's got the same base, same release point, same flick of the wrist. It really just comes down if he's hitting the shot or not. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Jordan Hawkins. Sneaky athletic ability as well. He's a little undersized for that two-guard spot in the NBA, but I think that could come with time, especially in the NBA you know, weight training program. I think you could see him add muscle, and I think Jordan Hawkins – I think he's going to be a guy that we kind of overlooked a little bit, and we're going to look back and be like, man, he should have been a top 10 pick in this year's draft, just purely based off his ability to shoot the basketball. But my overall take with this Zach Levine kind of saga we've been on and all these rumors, the Bulls do end up moving off Zach Levine before Thursday. I fully expect them to go full-on rebuild. I think it will be 100% on. I think this means DeMar will be traded. Then I think then I think the Nikola Vucevic sign-in trade will pretty much be inevitable. And I think the Bulls – to just be kind of admitting that the big three era of DeRozan, Levine, and Vooch, it didn't work. The Lonzo injury obviously was a huge reason because of that, but I think it would be time to just kind of rip that band-aid off and fully move on. And I think if Levine gets dealt, I think that's the direction that they are going. And we'll finish with one more thing. Stay picky, Bulls. Like, don't just cave in to a weak offer. Stay picky because even if you don't move Levine by Thursday, you can still run it back this year and trade him at the deadline and then kind of start the rebuild then. It's not all coming down to this Thursday, so stay picky. But anyways, if the Levine does get traded, we'll have a video for you guys ASAP. And if obviously the Bulls end up getting a draft pick, we'll have a video on that pick as well. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Stay in the loop. All Bulls news and rumors will be your go-to Bulls channel here on YouTube. As always, go Bulls.